Welcome to Learning Lad. In this video, we will see how a for loop works. For loop is one of the loop available in most of the programming languages. And in some languages, the syntax, the usage and the working of the for loop is pretty much the same. For example, if we talk about C, C++, Java, C sharp, then the for loops syntax, its usage and working is same. So here in this video, we will talk about the for loop in detail. We will see how we can construct a for loop and then we will see how a for loop works, which part executes first and all this stuff. So in order to use a for loop, first we have to use the keyword for and then we need to use a pair of parentheses and inside this parentheses we can have three sections. The first section is called as the initialization section and the next section is the condition section and then we have the updation section and after that we will use a pair of uh, curly braces and between these curly braces we can write the statements that we want to execute or we can write the body of the for loop. So first let us see what are the things that we can do with these three sections and then we will see how it will work. Now if you talk about this initialization section, then as the name indicates, here we are going to initialize the variables. For example, let me declare some variables. Let's say a comma b comma c. Okay, so what I can do here is I can initialize the variables. For example, I can write a equal to 10. So we are initializing the variable a with the value 10. And here, if you want to initialize more than one variables, then we can use the comma operator and we can initialize other variables. For example, I can write b equal to 20 or I can write c equal to 30. By using the comma, we can initialize more than one variables in here. Now, the next thing is while initializing the variables, if you want, we can use some expressions and we can store the result of that expression to initialize a variable. For example, I can write 10 plus 2. So a will get 12 now. OK, now if we don't want to initialize anything in this initialization section, then we can keep it as blank. So after that, we need to add this semicolon. This semicolon separates these sections. For example, after the initialization section, we have this semicolon which will separate it. And then we have the condition section and then we have this uh, semicolon which will uh, you know, indicate the end of this condition section and then we have this updation section. So since this updation section is the last section, we don't have to use the semicolon to end it. If you don't write anything in this initialization section, then it means we don't have to initialize anything for this for loop in this section. Now let's talk about this condition section. Here in this condition section, we will write an expression or we will write a condition which will evaluate to true or false or it will evaluate to something which will be treated as true or false. For example, in C language, zero is considered as false a non-zero value is considered as true. So the condition or the expression that we write here in this condition section has to evaluate to something which will be interpreted as true or false. And another thing here is we can't use the comma and we can't have more than one condition. We can't have multiple conditions. What we can do is we can use the all the operators that are available to us and we can write as complex as a condition can be. We can write that but we can't use a comma operator and we can write more than one conditions in here. And then if you don't want to write any condition in here, then we can keep it as blank. So if you don't write anything in this condition section, then it means that the condition here will be always true. So our for loop will be an infinite for loop because the condition on which this for loop will run, you know, it will always be true and this for loop will continue forever. So in this case, if we don't have anything in this uh, condition section, then in this body of this for loop, we need to have a condition where the for loop will stop at some point. Okay. And after that, uh, we need to add a semicolon and it will end the condition section. After that, we have this updation section. As the name indicates here, we can update the values of the variables. 
for example we can increment the values of the variables we can decrement it or we can add 10 to the value of the variable or we can do whatever the thing that we have to do according to the logic for example here we can write uh, if you have the variable a then we can write a plus plus and uh, if you want to update the values of multiple variables then you can use the comma operator in here and you can um, update the values of multiple variables for example i can write b plus equal to 20 and then comma and i can write c minus minus so here we can update the values of multiple variables now if you don't want to do anything in this updation section then you can keep it as blank okay now here one thing that you have to remember is in this initialization section and in this updation section we can use the comma operator and we can initialize or update the multiple variables but in this condition section we can't use the comma operator and we can't have multiple uh, conditions and after that we use this pair of uh, curly braces and between these curly braces we will write all those statements that we want to execute inside this for loop now if you have only one statement to execute then you can skip these curly braces so if you have more than one statement to execute then you need to uh, use the curly braces okay so now how this for loop works so when this for loop is executed for the first time first this initialization section will be executed whatever the variables that we are initializing in this initialization section will be done and since it is the initialization section it will be executed only once for example if you are initializing a variable with a value of 10 you know you don't have to do it every time so the initialization section will be executed first and it will be executed only once and after this initialization section this condition section will be executed this condition or this expression will be evaluated if this expression evaluates to true then the body of this for loop will be executed all the statements that we have inside in the inside this for loop will be executed if this condition evaluates to false then nothing will be executed this for loop will be terminated so during the first iteration if this condition evaluates to false then this for loop body will not be executed and this updation part will not be executed so if this condition evaluates to true then the body of this for loop executes and after executing all the statements that are inside the body of this for loop the updation part will be executed so whatever the variables that we have updating here that will be done after the updation part again the condition part will be executed so if the condition evaluates to true then the body of this uh, for loop will be executed if the condition evaluates to false then the for loop will terminate the control will come out of this for loop and whatever that we have next that will be executed and here if the condition evaluates to true then the all the statements of this for loop will be executed and after that again the updation part will be executed and after that then again the condition will be checked and this will repeat so when this condition part evaluates to false this for loop will terminate if we have a condition which is always true in this uh, for loops condition section then in the body of this for loop we need to have a condition where the for loop should terminate and to do that we can use the break statement so now we have seen how the for loop executes let's see a simple example um, to print the numbers from 1 to 10 uh, using a for loop so here i'm going to use a variable and i'm going to call it as number and in this initialization section i'm going to initialize this number variable with a value of 1 and after that i'm going to add the semicolon and then in this condition section I need to specify I need to write a condition and the condition here will be as long as this number variable contains a value which is less than or equal to 10 I want to execute the body of this for loop and after that we will use a semicolon in here and in this updation section we will write we will increment the value of this number variable so with every iteration number variables value will be incremented by one and when it becomes 11 this condition will fail and the for loop will stop executing now here in the body of this for loop i'm going to use a 
printf statement and I'm going to display this uh, value stored in the number variable. So I'm going to use percentage %d format specifier and after that I'm going to include a space and here I'm going to refer the number variable. Okay, now I'm going to save this program. I'm going to run the code and here you guys can see we have the output from 1 to 10. So this is it guys for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you don't like it, then hit the dislike button. If you want to say something, then write that in the comment box. For more tutorials like this, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later in the next video.